In today's video, I will tell you how you can make extra money while flying as a cabin crew or how you can even perhaps double your salary when you will be working as a cabin crew. And I will talk about a very important set of skills, which is your sales management skills. I don't think this is a topic that any of the cabin crew consultants have mentioned it, but this is an opportunity where you as a cabin crew or as a future cabin crew can even double your salary. If you know anyone who flies for Qatar Airways or for Emirates Airlines, kindly share this video with them and help them, hopefully, to earn more money. Let's start! My name is Julia George and I used to fly for Qatar Airways for 10 years where I have resigned from my last work position as a cabin service director and I'm currently studying aviation management master program at Wildau Institute of Applied Science in Berlin. Meanwhile, I work as a snore lab assistant in Helios Kliniken in Schwerin. I will be talking to you about how to make extra money while you will be flying as a cabin crew or you're currently flying as a cabin crew and we're gonna talk about the most important job that the supervisors in Qatar Airways do and in Emirates Airlines it's a job for every cabin crew they're all empowered but it's called duty-free sales on board the aircraft. Uh, did you knew that by selling duty-free you can actually earn 10% of the revenue that you have sailed. I will give you an average understanding of what does that mean. You have a duty-free magazine which is available in front of every passenger seat and usually for, for the Gulf carriers but also it happens to the European Airlines. In that duty-free magazine you've got a selection of jewelry, selection of boxes, gift boxes, selection of perfumes, selection of creams, and all the other items that are perhaps needed for the flight or you might want to gift to your loved ones upon arrival. They are very carefully chosen. People who are sitting and designing that duty-free magazine are very much into the psychology of flying when it comes to the customer service. What would the passengers might need um, during the flight or in flight? Therefore, um, on monthly basis or on three months, you would see that these magazines have been updated. Coming to the duty-free sales on board the aircraft, I would speak from uh, my experience, from the experience as a Qatar Airways cabin crew, as I was the one who was handling the duty-free when I worked as a cabin senior, and I was getting 10% monthly on the revenue that I was making from my own duty-free sale. Uh, again, I'm emphasizing in Qatar Airways, the duty-free sales is done by their cabin seniors, which are the people wearing gray uniforms and they're the ones who are leaders in economy cabin, but they're doing the duty-free sales in the entire aircraft. The duty-free card that has been loaded by the catering department is their responsibility. Um, but when it comes to the um, Emirates Airlines, uh, their duty-free sales are uh, something that goes for the entire cabin crew. When it comes again to Qatar Airways, uh, another thing that I will mention is that now, before I leave the company actually, uh, we also had something called empowering the other cabin crew to help uh, the seniors in the duty-free sales and then respectively they will fill up a form and those 10% of the item that has been sold will go to that crew. If that rule is still applicable in Qatar Airways, then it is whatever I'm gonna say over here is applicable to all the cabin crew in Qatar Airways. If not, if only the supervisor is still just in my time was doing the duty-free um, sales, then cabin seniors get ready to make a lot of money now. By the end of this video, you will exactly know how to make money because I will tell you my secret. During our cabin senior training with Qatar Airways, the duty-free service was something that was paid close attention. Um, just like the other things, but the duty-free sales on board the aircraft was an exclusive service, which was part of the sequence of service on board the aircraft. Why do I mean part of the sequence of service? For the simple reason, once we do the entire um, service of the meal service, tea, coffee, drinks, at the end, before the lights are dimmed for the passengers' um, enjoyment and relax relaxation, we would go around and we would conduct the duty-free. Um, I would say that every supervisor has their own style of how they do the duty-free 
somebody would do it as per the procedure one time after the service another time before the second service or after the second service but they make sure they make around it the aircraft and they make sure that they introduce that they're selling um, items on board the aircraft and when i was a cabin crew in economy and in business class i was having an excellent opportunity to learn um, about the duty-free service and in fact in my first very first flight as a cabin crew I was an initiative to uh, I showed up an initiative to go with my uh, cabin senior and to uh, do the duty-free in order to understand what does this mean this card that has no food no drinks but it has items it has cigarettes alcohol uh, all the things that passengers as I have mentioned people who are designing the duty-free magazine they know exactly what might be the demand for it why because they're simply doing good statistics um, and the good statistics are something that comes up from data collection there are a lot of questionnaires who are answered on daily basis and this is how people are tailoring and preparing that duty-free magazine but we will not go into details in this video we're going to talk about how you guys can increase your duty-free sales and what was my secret um, and on the internet you will find a lot of things like identify your goals, do this, do that. But the most important thing at this moment if you're thinking how to make money of selling duty-free is to know do you want to make money of uh, duty-free sales or you just want to do the service and you know, finish with it. Because if you want to make money then your mindset, mindset to prepare for this uh, scenario or to prepare to make money is going to be different. If your mindset is that you just want to do the, you know, round thing and if you sell, you sell, you're enough with what you have, you don't want extra, then you don't even want to watch this video. I'm very sorry I took some time from yours um, and thank you very much for watching this video. But as I have said, we're going to talk about how to make money selling duty free on board. When I was given the responsibility to do the duty free sales, I was very happy. Um, I'm a person by nature that wants to interact with people and I sat down and I really thought about how I can make myself successful in this task. This is something that I can benefit from it. This is a tool given to me. I have to use it and I have to find a way how I'm gonna do it. Um, I took the duty free magazine and the duty free magazine is by the way something that you would see very frequently the cabin crew reading and going through it and checking out new stuff that are there available. So what I used to do is I would read each and every article about the um, uh, item that was available on board for sales and I would know what kind of perfume it is or what kind of watch it is. I would know what kind of an adapter it is, for example, the gift boxes. What is the selection that it is available for me? Because you would often um, into your conversation with the passengers as let's make one thing clear. You never know what your passengers will ask you around you. And not everyone is fond of reading. You would you might think that the passengers can open, just read and check. Why do they bother me? But we're not there to um, estimate or to know what the passenger is supposed to do. We are there to know what we can do to make that sales enhanced and hopefully earn that 10% revenue. So I would always read the article and I would know exactly, for example, Estee Lauder Perfume Mystic Woods, what does it contain? And when I will be interacting with the passenger, because I am someone who would like to get to know people and characters, I would try to gain, and if we talk about perfumes, I would try to gain information on what kind of perfumes this person might want. Or when you're presenting the perfumes, you would know, would you like to have something that smells woody or you would like to have something flowerish and stuff like this. You know with what kind of products you're basically having within your service card, duty-free service card. Um, and another thing that I was uh, practicing when it comes to um, uh, duty-free sales is that I never used a perfume that was not in the duty-free magazine. Um, I will share with you, ladies and gentlemen, one small um, uh, story which happened on board the aircraft with my crew. We had a passenger who uh, was very happy with the service on board the aircraft and um, he was he wanted to buy some perfume uh, as a gift 
and I was talking to him, I interacted with him and I presented all the perfumes to him. I even had in my bag two perfumes that were available, I give to try so he could see because on board the aircraft, at least in Qatar Airways, testers for perfumes were not available. But I always make sure that I use a perfume that is inside the duty-free magazine. Why? You are passing through the cabin and you will very frequently have either a crew or passenger who's going to ask you, what kind of perfume is that? Smells very nice. This is the time where you can be brilliant and say, we have it on board. It's actually this one. Would you like to have it perhaps? And this is how you actually are enhancing that duty-free sales. So this passenger, we, we interacted with him or I interacted with him and uh, we made sure that he actually bought the two perfumes that I have presented to him. He really liked it. One was for a um, gift for his daughter. Another one was gift for his mother, if I'm not mistaken. My uh, attitude when it comes to sales was the same when I was a cabin service director and I was not the one who's uh, dealing with the duty free. Why? For the simple reason, I love the interaction with people. And if that brings revenue to the entire company, then why not? Remember, Ladies and gentlemen, the entire revenue that com the company gets, irrespective if it is your in-flight duty-free, the passenger tickets, the cargo, those are the factors that are paying off the salary of the cabin crew. Last but not the least, they're doing a proper return on investment, which is very, very important for the entire, entire financial situation of the company where you're working for. And another factor which I mentioned uh, beside, you know, knowing each uh, and every perfume would be um, uh, jewelries, which is an interesting thing. Uh, when it comes to jewelries, they're also just like the perfumes, they're changing on a regular basis. But knowing what is exactly inside your cart, because remember one thing, uh, at least in Qatar Airways, all the duty-free um, items were not available. Perhaps for Paris and London flights, you would have uh, duty-free uh, items and cards that everything will be available um, often uh, those are actually something called weight restrictions because a lot of uh, passengers and cabin crews would not understand that due to weight restrictions simply some uh, flights or in some flights the duty-free card cannot be full um, the aircraft is a limited space perhaps we have a lot of cargo and literally every kilo and kilogram have to be uh, reconsidered and therefore the entire duty-free simply cannot be loaded because we have to ensure that the priority uh, that must be loaded on board the aircraft is the food and drinks for the passengers this is a uh, thing that it's good to know very, very important parameter when it comes to the in-flight duty-free sales is to communicate with your passengers. Get to know your passengers. Show them that you know your products and establish a communication in which they can trust you. Has it happened to you often that you enter a store or you enter a makeup store, let's say in Sephora, and you had a need to buy just a lip pen and a gloss? and you ended up buying a full bag of makeup. And do you know why is that? It's because the person who was doing the sales was so good and convinced you that you need a foundation, that you need a highlighter, you need a contour set, you need eyeshadow, and you ended up paying triple the amount that you have pre-planned pre for that visit in the Sephora store. The very same thing you guys can do on board the aircraft with your passengers. The passengers might have an intention to buy just a perfume, but if you're a good salesperson, you can convince them that they need all other things that they have never thought about just by doing a proper conversation or doing that first impression moment and convincing the, the passenger or the person to whom you're selling the item that they actually need more stuff. One thing that I can suggest in circumstances like this, you would have often passengers asking you for chargers on board the aircraft, for cables or their charger simply is missing, is damaged. This is the time that you know your products. And as I have said earlier, you know that this product is available and you might wanna offer it to the passenger. But how do you offer the product? You do, don't just say, we have this uh, adapter, which is uh, for you, sir, you can use it but make sure that you use 
the advertisement term. This is a 24 hours adapter who's gonna charge your phone in one hour or one and a half hour. Always these terms have been written um, under the product. So this is how you actually become convincing. And this is how you actually build up the moment that what you are selling, the passenger actually trust on that. He or she is trusting you that you're selling a high quality product. Um, Ladies and gentlemen, perhaps on some flights, um, no matter how hard you try, no matter how much you establish the duty-free sales on board the aircraft, will simply not go. Um, however, do not forget that uh, airlines such as Qatar Airways or Emirates Airlines or Etihad Airways have something very powerful on board the aircraft and that is called their business class and their first class. And with these passengers, you can do a proper communication and with these passengers, you can do, I wouldn't say proper communication, but you can go into that personalized conversation where you can establish a first impression because often the business class passengers are very interested to buy some things um, from the duty free why it's because they simply have the funds to do that and they often need those things such as chargers perfumes which we can easily forget and people who are flying in business class are usually business people who have deal who need to deal with a lot of things so forgetting definitely can happen but therefore here you are as a good salesperson as a good Sale, cabin crew who has good set of sales sales management skills that can jump and that can do that um, ladies and gentlemen in qatar airways there are often they were at the time when i was working awards we had uh, monthly the best duty-free seller among the other cabin seniors you would have first second and third place this was also something nice that the company was doing to stimulate their crew to um, enhance and to do more duty-free sales um, however i do believe that the biggest competition to earn the revenue that you're gonna make should be within yourself um, there are flights that are very popular where the duty-free sales just goes like this at my time when I was flying as a cabin crew, those are flights to Paris, London, Istanbul. Um, so you might also want to pre-plan your roster and to get destinations where duty-free sales is high and to do a good revenue. Um, let me, for the last part of this video, give you a small um, idea of what does that mean. Um, at the time when I was flying as a cabin crew and I was a cabin senior, my basic salary as a cabin senior was around 5,300 uh, Qatari Rials. So, uh, if I made a duty-free sale in that month with around 5,000 Qatari Rials, which was normally every month happening, I would get 500 Rials. However, my target was to go up to 20 or 30,000. And I'm gonna give you a small um, information on it. We had a lot of perfumes that are costing 500 reals or 120 euros, let's say, but I'm gonna be talking in reals. You're more than welcome to convert them in your own currency to understand what does that mean. We had watches that are 1,300 reals. We had a lot of items which are a bit more expensive. Now, if you do a sale uh, on board the aircraft of 25,000 reals for the entire month, not only on one flight, but for the entire month. And on an average base, you would get seven flights in the roster, which means those are 14 sectors going and coming back. If you divide those 14 sectors into uh, 2,000 reals um, or per sector that you would uh, do the sales, then you would end up and in those 2000 reels can be two perfumes and a watch you don't have to sell the entire card then from 25000 qatari reels you are getting on your salary 2500 reels plus which on an average base or if you convert it into euros will be around 500 something euros and that's not a joke in my country 500 euros is a um, salary well-paid salary but if you get this as a revenue on your cabin crew salary your entire uh, I wouldn't say satisfaction but your entire number of your cabin crew salary is uh, looking quite attractive and quite amazing and in fact 
when I was a cabin senior, I was very frequently earning a lot of revenue from my uh, duty-free sales. I was very happy. That's the time when I actually also uh, bought the car and the most branded clothes that I have in my closet. So therefore, ladies and gentlemen, it is super important to know that you have something in your hands that can bring you money. And that something is called your in-flight duty-free sales card. Somebody also might pop up the question, but I have my personal product. Can I sell my personal product on board the aircraft? No, uh, when it comes to Qatar Airways, Emirates, Etihad and airlines uh, in general, you are they are hired as a cabin crew, not a uh, brand ambassador for the product that you own. However, I have frequently seen cabin crew doing their business on board the aircraft selling stockings from their home country, selling lipsticks, um, selling stuff. This is all subject to your decision, how much you want to involve yourself and live with the possibility that you might fall into trouble. This is a possibility and a risk that you have, have to be actually ready. Uh, if I'm ever caught with this decision, I would have to be able to take the responsibility. When it comes to your own product, please, uh, remember that if you're doing such a thing and you're selling your lipsticks, your stockings, your, you know, your, I don't know, aloe vera, herbalife or whatsoever, a lot of um, and things the, the crew are trading and are doing, um, you have to live with the risk that might one day if you get caught, um, most probably your contract is going to end then and there and you will be getting a confirmed ticket one way to your home country. Thank you very much for watching this video. I do hope that many of you will now switch on their mindset to actually start making money, revenues, making up to 1000 euros extra. They're accruing Qataris who are making 1000 euros extra or 5000, close to 5000. Um, that is 1000 plus euros extra uh, with close to 5000 uh, Qatar reals extra on their salary which was very good um, and you would say that they are money oriented people nevertheless those people are the ones who know what they have in their hands again uh, for the all the videos that are coming and are elaborating the topic of cabin crew are elaborating subjects which are related how to be healthy happy knowledgeable and strong you might want to click the subscribe button read me on xcrewnextcrew.com where i release blogs related to the topic of the cabin crew and also follow me on my instagram account xcrewnextcrew bye bye and have a nice day bye.